Hello and welcome back. This is Shadowcraft episode 20. And I've got to be completely honest with you, I'm still kind of amazed I'm on 20. <laughs> I've not done anything, well, I've done some things, but I've not done anything for this length of time, and I'm uh, still kind of excited to still be doing it, and that's always a great thing. Um, anyway, so between the previous episode and this one, I went ahead and I tore down my little shack here. You might be noticing that, hey, where'd that big huge building go? Um, I decided that since I had that little area I had set up for the uh, tree farm over here, since I set up the boiler and everything over here, which is working quite nice, if you see we have just over 34 stacks of wood, so that's going fantabulous. Um, I'm still getting a bit of a bug right now with the uh, wiring from the turbine here. It works for like two minutes and then it stops working. Um, that is something that it, it will get fixed in time. In the meanwhile, it's it's fine. It's fine. It's working okay. I'm still getting a positive amount of wood gain, so I'm not too terribly worried about it at the moment. Um, I decided I went ahead and built my blast furnace in here, so if I need to, I can make some steel. It is, strictly speaking, still cheaper to use the recipe added by Coclavia Core, since it only takes two charcoal or two coal or a coal and a charcoal and the iron ingot and then one more to smelt it. So we're looking at a cost of approximately, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, you're looking at spending four fuel to make the uh, Coclavia steel or five to make the Railcraft. So it's, it's a little bit more efficient to do it the other way. However, this I can just set a stack of iron into the hopper and walk away. I could, I suppose, do the same with the other recipe, but there's other crafting steps involved. And once I get some more, say, uh, automated crafting things set up, that's probably the way I'll be going. But for now, this works quite well. And that is an infernal skeleton. There's no way it has 80 hit points normally. Yeah, let's not open the uh, door there. So anyway, I, t I tore out the building here. I finished building the uh, little charcoal making factory here. This makes this the second building that I've actually finished. And I've still not finished that darn factory, unfortunately. I am still lost as to how to do the mixing. I've been playing around on a creative test world, and it's just not worked right. Oh my, Wither Storm Ninja Alchemist. Let's give him a wide berth. Um, but for now, like I, like I mentioned in the previous episode, at least I think I did. It might have been part of the stuff that got cut. Um, this is currently functioning for two times or duplication, so I'm able to go ahead and request anything out of here I want for any of the four dust that this works for. And whenever I get any uh, ore, I just put it right in the chest here, and it goes off and gets processed. And I think... I think this is my boomerang I lost a little bit earlier. Um, I don't have a pick on me though. I don't think this top picks up tile entities. No. So that's not going to work. Um, anyway, for today, rather than uh, build up some walls here when I'm not exactly sure about the size that I'm going to need for the layout, I figured I'll try to do something else. And it's actually been a little bit since I've played with Blood Magic. And I was looking over some of the stuff online, and I've realized something <laughs> that's kind of bad. The area I have set up in my tower here on the uh, second floor, it works nice for the kind of altar that I have currently. Let's go ahead and uh, pull out that divination sigil. It works nice for this, which is just a uh, tier 3 altar. I might be able to fit a tier 4 in here, but there is no way I could fit a tier 5 in here. And, I mean, for now, I suppose that's okay, but you know what? I would actually, I would really, really prefer having a setup where I could actually just grow into the tier 5 in one spot without having to move everything midway through. So what I'm thinking about is I actually want to go ahead and create a dedicated area for blood magic. I think I can go ahead and leave, like, say, a smaller altar here for, uh, if I just need to, like, fill something up, I can do it here. But I also want to create a larger area for a really big freaking altar eventually for when I get to it. Um, from what I saw, it takes an area that's going to be roughly 17 by 17. And if my math is not so rusty, if you were to put 
for what I would like to do, I would like to have it in a, on top of a half sphere. And unless my math is rusty, if you were to put a square inside of a circle with the four points laying on the outer, on the outer edge of the circle, the uh, line from the top left to the bottom right would be the diameter of the circle. And for a 17 by 17 area, I'm going to need at least, I believe, a 24 diameter circle. And just for the sake of actually being able to like walk around and having space, you're going to want to make it an odd shape to fit the altar better. And for like room, I'd probably want to bump it up to say like uh, 27, 29, maybe even 31 diameter. And that's a fairly good space. I mean, that's almost four chunks, four full chunks. But I don't want to do that. So what I'm thinking of doing is I actually would like to have access to that new area from this room right here. And the way I'm thinking of doing this is by uh, knocking a little hole in this wall here and creating a... Uh, I don't want to say it's not really quite hidden, but I, I want to do something with rail carts, I think. Something with rail carts and something with magic. I mean, it's not going to be too amazing, though. I think it'll be really neat. Um, for right now, though, I'm not going to concentrate on the rail stuff. I actually have some charcoal cooking up over in my uh, little uh, wood farm area over there. And I'm going to need a lot more creosote than I have at the moment. So there's just waiting for that. So... That's not really terribly entertaining, so I figured what would be good today would be to actually make the island. And what I am going to do is actually if go ahead and pull up the map here. So if you see where we are right now in the tower, I'm thinking about having the uh, area over to the northeast above the water there. That way, if I'm able to light it up, I can actually you know AFK there if I need to, and I'm not going to be too terribly worried about being attacked. I will still risk starving to death, though, so that's uh, something to keep in mind. Um, before I get too terribly involved, though, I think I actually did something really stupid, and I don't have a pick on me at the moment. All right, I, th I think I know what happened to it. I think I left it in the arcane reconstructor I made. I set this thing up over here so that I'm actually able to repair some of the tools I have. Um, so yeah, right now it's just working on this diamond axe. I had to use my silk touch axe, yeah, my silk touch pickaxe, a little bit earlier, and rather than just risk it getting further damaged, I went ahead and made this so I could uh, fix it. Also made these charge focuses to increase the speed at which it works. So far, it's going fairly well actually. And if you notice, my uh, diamond pickaxe here is getting fairly low in durability. Luckily, it's got on breaking three though, so I mean that's pretty good. For now though, we're just going to go ahead and take it. I love those things. Anyway, so let's go ahead and temporarily uh, knock a little hole in the wall over here. And make sure we leave a, a torch up so that it doesn't get too dark. So, like, right here. Perfect. Alright, so what I'm thinking is it would be nice to have kind of a little... Uh, small little walkway popping out of the side of the tower here. For now we're just going to use dirt as a quick little uh, mock-up. Coming out a little bit, maybe make it look like it's attached to the tower, and then have a small kind of bridge, kind of floating magical kind of structure thingy coming off of this going to the island that'll be like right over there. Alright, so I'm back with a quick checkup as to see what's going on here. Uh, you might notice that we have this little thing of dirt coming out of the side of my tower. Um, this is leading over to a very small circle. I use the term circle very loosely. When you have something that's only about five blocks across, you're not going to get something very round. Um, there's still a layer of what would be walls that has to go around here. I just haven't put that up yet. Um, I also have a thing of dirt coming off of it to the uh, west here, leading to this little edge. I'm actually planning on having two ways to get to this general area. The main way is going to be through the tower, so if I'm doing anything over there, I can access from there. 
and the other way will be from I want to add like either like a uh, staircase entrance way here or something magic related I'm not sure which to be honest um, anyway if you notice on the little platform there is a another dirt thing leading off that is going to be the main part of the bridge as is the netherrack and the dirt beyond it the uh, last piece of netherrack there is actually going to be the end point of the bridge everything from then on is going to be part of the platform uh, i went ahead and looked up the general shape of what i'll need to do and for a ellipsoid well half of an ellipsoid platform that i'd like to do i'm going to end up needing probably about uh, a thousand blocks or so just to make a hollow shell and i kind of want to not make a hollow shell i'd kind of like to fill it in i'm not sure how i want to do that at the moment but i mean right now my main my main main goal is to get the shell itself constructed uh what i'm probably going to end up using is well what are, right now what i have an abundance of is stone i have some marble and i have some of the uh, fitted abyssal stone left over i don't have enough of either of these so I mean really my only option is stone and stuff that I can make out of stone let's go ahead and I think I have my chisel in here somewhere there we go all right so let's go ahead and pull out the chisel so I mean of what I can make in here I'm thinking that my best bet is probably going to be to go with uh, either the stone bricks in the fancy arrangement the uh, disorder stone panels or just, you know, the classic stone bricks. Um, the stone bricks panel would be kind of interesting, but I mean, it's really, it would just be a sea of gray with no differentiation between it. If I go with the stone bricks, I can at least put some mossy stone bricks in every here or there, or some of the cracked stone bricks. So yeah, I tell you what, I think I'll actually go ahead and go with the regular stone bricks. So what I'll do real quick, let's go ahead and make up Oh, it's the wrong bag again. Okay, you off the hotbar, you on the hotbar. Okay, let's go ahead and get some more of these. I like that I can actually just make the stone bricks directly from the chisel rather than having to uh, go through the effort of crafting them, even though it really is quite easy. Okay, let's get down here a little bit. All right, so for the general shape that I want to make here, let's go all the way over here. This is kind of low, which is why I'm doing a uh, ellipsoid shape instead of a half of a sphere. I'll be able to compact the bottom up just a little bit, so instead of having like something that's going all the way down and touching the water to make a sphere, I'll be able to have something that's only going to go down maybe, say, about uh, three or four blocks or so. There we go. That is the rough outline of the area that we're going to be working with here. I mean, that is actually, I mean, if once this gets filled in, this is a fairly good sized area. I mean, I'll have plenty of room to set up my uh, blood altar in the center here. Uh, the main thing I need to do is make sure that I have it set up dead center just for the sake of uh, not going nuts by looking at an odd structure. Some people can do that quite well. I, I really, I can't. I mean, that building over there has a slight deviation in one of the walls, and I uh, only did that because it was easier than adjusting the landscape. All right, so where are we? So dead center is roughly like right here. So roughly right the spot right here is where the actual center of the altar is going to be. So that's a good amount of space. I mean, I'm not going to be able to see any of this stuff, unfortunately. 
but I will have a pretty much a clear view of the horizon. Uh, not that there's much to see on the horizon, this is mostly water. Um, anyway, so what I need to do is I probably need to go get myself a bucket, and I need to find a good way to go ahead and dip down and fill in the... Oh! Uh, as I was saying, I need to find a way to actually fill in the bottom layers so that it's uh, a little bit more solid and a little bit more safe to work on. Uh, there we go. So this is the basic... Uh, oops, so much for that. This is the basic shell of the platform that we're going to be using here. Um, so it doesn't go too terribly deep. I mean, at most, between the floor level, which is the very top one right here. Let's go ahead and get the UI back since we're not up the vantage point. And down here for floor level, there's really only going to be three layers of like space to work with. I've actually been contemplating using this as like a gigantic bowl, and I'm seriously considering filling it with uh, blocks of the uh, life essence, the life points, whatever it's called, from blood magic. However, that would take a ton a ton of blocks to fill this up so that might be a more of a long-term project to get this entire thing full of blood which I think would be really neat. Um, alternatively if I want to bring in some other magic to it I know I could probably fill this up easily with uh, the liquid essence for Mars Magica. I think that would just be a really neat thing to do and then I can have a glass floor and just be able to look down and see all that stuff. I think it would be neat. Um, but anyway I really do need to go ahead and get this stuff filled in so that I'm able to work up here a little bit easier. I've fallen off of this more times than I really do care to admit. Uh, let's go ahead and knock down this uh, little dirt thing. I'm not going to be too terribly worried about getting the actual altar set up in this episode. The main thing that I'm con going to concentrate on is going to be getting this filled out and at least set up for basic stuff and getting the... Uh, bridges set up. Uh, the way that I want to do the bridges actually is for this bit right here where there's another rack, there's not going to be a bridge there. Uh, the way that we're going to be able to traverse back and forth is going to be via minecart. And we're going to actually uh, take advantage of a really rarely used feature of gold inlays in Ars Magica in that they will actually teleport a cart that is riding over them up to 10 blocks. So it's going to go, there's going to be a gap right here. You're going to be in a cart, it's going to go rattling along. We're going to hit the golden light right here. And then we're just going to go zap straight across here. And then we'll have whatever kind of like little landing or whatever we're going to disembark on. I think it'll be really neat. Um, tell you what though, I do need to go ahead and fill this in. So as soon as we, uh, Fill this in, or at least get it close to workable. I'll be right back. And I think I actually need to get some food too, so uh, I'll go ahead and kill those two birds. And then I'll see you with more stone. So about half an hour and quite a few stacks of stone bricks later, the basis of my little uh, blood bowl here is done. The uh, main thing I still have to do is for the very top layer, starting right here, this is... Uh, going to get glass filled in here. Um, I'm going to need to actually save up a good, 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 good amount of glass just to fill this all up. Um, I might, for the time being, only fill up the center areas and leave like a little bit of kind of like a empty walkway so that if you're walking by you can actually, well, if you were to fall in, you could fall into the liquid blood stuff. Um, even if I do that though, I'm still going to need a good amount of glass. Um, what I think I'll be using is the, probably the thickened glass from uh, Extra Utilities. The other option is the, where is it? There's borderless glass right here from Chisel. That may also work. The uh, upside to using the stuff from Extra Utilities is that I can pick this stuff up with a regular axe and it's not going to break. Uh, that definitely would uh, put me in favor of this. Something else I could do, and it should work equally well, I could actually uh, make the uh, thickened glass here, and luckily enough, the thickened glass and most of the decorative blocks from Extra Utilities, you can actually saw those in half to make micro blocks, and the micro blocks still have connected textures. So that is also a pretty good possibility. 
Plus, it would suspend the platform just a little bit above the blood, so that might be a little bit better in the way in terms of like decoration. All right, but for now though, I'm oh, I don't want to do too much more in here until I get the uh, bridge and stuff set up. So for my next goal, I need to actually get the stuff set up over there and the general shape of the bridge. Um, that's definitely not happening at night though. I was able to work on this because there was nothing actually in my immediate area. But now this is kind of getting dangerous. And for some reason I'm lagging just a little bit and I'm not quite sure why. This guy's going weeping angel on me. He's go he's moving very slowly when I'm looking at him. If I look away, he's like jumping. Oh, if you look at the sky, I just saw it hitch pretty badly. There we go. Yeah. So I I'm not quite sure why I'm lagging like this, but I've uh, I'm gonna go ahead and sleep the night away. Maybe restart my client and get to uh, building some of these other towers. So this is actually getting a little bit long here. I don't want to have an episode that is just me talking the entire time. However, for everything that I still need to do to this, this is uh, going to take a little bit more work on my part. Um, so rather than uh, draw this one out, I think I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here. Uh, between this episode and the next, I'm going to actually work on and get the uh, bridges installed between the two buildings. I need to get a roof onto this thing. I have actually finished the bottom off, and I have an idea of what to use for decorations, and it's going to be from Ars Magic, and I think it might look really neat. Um, and I also need to get the uh, bridges set up over here, as well as create some walls for the bowl. Oh, and I have plenty of this glass I need to put down, so it's uh, I've got my work cut out for me. Um, I would like next episode, though, to be a little bit more focused on the method of transportation getting from one side to the other. This guy is following me like crazy. Um, so anyway, I want to thank you for watching this episode of Shadowcraft. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, please leave a message below. And as always, have a good night. Well, day. Yeah, I'm kind of tired. <laughs> See you later.